The high-pressure oil system is one of the more critical parts of being able to get good performance out of a 6.0 diesel. Let's go back to pump and talk about the control system and measurements and things we need to do to verify this pump operation. One of the things we've been reported by numerous shops is the 2003 and 2004 model years had a problem with these plugs working loose, the uh, oil pump causing extended crank problem. might want to look for that in case you think you can't get full oil pressure. We're going to talk more about not being able to get full oil pressure shortly, so this is one of the places we're going to look if we can't get full oil pressure. If we need to check the oil pressure with a mechanical gauge, you can come in here and use this test port with a 5,000 PSI gauge. Take all the proper precautions you should be taking for a high-pressure injection system like this. It is hydraulic pressure that is very high and can be dangerous. The injector pressure is high for heavy loads, so the pump must be able to support oil pressures up to 4,000 PSI. But we've got to control it because we're going to be using it to dump off the excess pressure, like cranking, for instance. We will bypass pressure, so this is a bypass system. IPR opens up to bypass and maintain the lower pressure. It'll go full force to give us 4,000 PSI, bypass it to give us lower values. It's going to control the high-pressure oil by varying the duty cycle of the pressure regulator. Here's what we're talking about. Here's the pressure regulator on the left and the IPC on the right. Now, the IPC there is on an early model 6. This is the closed-loop system. What's going to happen is we're going to take a reading from the injector control pressure sensor, the IPC, send it to the computer, which is then going to adjust the IPR to the required duty cycle to achieve the desired pressure as measured by the IPC. It's called a closed loop system. We're going to keep changing it and we're going to talk about that later. If we see it constantly changing, we probably have a leak. So let's talk, get into this and look at this further because there's a lot of good clues coming from these two readings. They're going to be installed in the high pressure pump on the early models. The IPC is moved to the right valve cover on later models, which is a real problem on the EVANs because it's hard to get to. Here's what they look like if we just look at a basic schematic. We've got our pump here supplying a common rail to both of the sets of injectors, the left and right heads. This is the regulator. It's going to be sending it back to the reservoir to maintain the low pressure. The, the left is our pressure sensor, the injector control pressure sensor. It's going to tell the computer when the pressure is right then the computer is going to adjust the duty cycle to get the correct pressure. And like everything, there's old and new styles. Surprise, surprise. Here's the locations. The early ones had it down when we showed the first. Later ones moved to the left valve cover, which is a problem, as I said, on the EVAN. The IPC screen is frequently damaged when we get large contaminations in the oil. And you can see where well, we've had screens punched out. Now, if you've ever taken one of these out and tried to punch a hole in it with a screwdriver or something, this is stainless steel. It's not easy to do. So we've had some major debris going through some of these uh, some of these regulators. They put the stronger version in the middle there. That's the new improved version. It still blows holes in it. We get a lot of debris. There are kits to replace the O-rings in case you get a leaking pressure regulator, and they have new screens to go in the front. The main use for these is to put new O-rings on to prevent leakage. PCM is going to control, control injector control pressure by duty cycle in the IPR. It's going to run from anywhere from 450 to 3 to 4,000 PSI. We keep saying 3 to 4 because we have two different versions. 450 is the bare minimum. The electrical signal to the solenoid creates a magnetic field which applies a variable force of the pressure control. The FICM uses IPC signal to command the correct injection timing. So we have a number of things looking at the injector control pressure and working off of this. So it's a closed loop system. The PCM tries to set the right pressure with a pressure regulator, and the system tries to adjust to the pressure by reading the pressure control voltage from the sensor. So it's a closed-loop system. If we're going to have control, zero means we'll have full return back to the reservoir. That's going to give us uh, zero PSI. 100% is full power to the inject closed valve. That's going to be three to 4,000, depending on the vintage. Newer versions will have the 4,000 PSI. Now, we need to know something important here. If the engine is cranked and doesn't start, we can see values jump up to 54 to 85%. That's unusual. Usually, it starts before they get that high. The pressure is measured by the injector control pressure sensor. So we're going to be looking at that for feedback. If it's wrong, it's going to give us some bad readings. But if we have normal-looking pressure and we try to crank it, 
and we go to 54 to 85, and we can't develop 500 PSI, that's 0.8 volts ICP, we probably have an oil leak, and we're not going to get the stuff to start. We've got to find out why oil pressure is too low. Normal at key on engine off, we run to 10 to 15 percent. Cranking normally, 15 to 35 percent. We only go to that 54 to 85 if we're having to demand a lot more oil pressure than normal. Go look for a leak. Typical idle is 8 to 16. In full load, without any sudden changes, it's going to be less than 50 percent. The only time you're going to see it go above 50 percent is sudden acceleration, wide open throttle, you'll see higher values. So most of the time, we're going to be running less than 50% of full load. We'll only get to that 85%, 54 to 85, cranking if something's wrong. We're going to be getting up to close to 85 if something is wrong when we're trying to go under heavy load. So this is important values. Now, the other thing about these values, they should be stable. If they're fluctuating in these readings on your scan tool, you probably have a leak. Let's say we're sitting at idle 20 25%, and it's moving around. Well, it's already higher than 16. And fluctuating means we probably have a leak somewhere. You can start looking for the leak. We're going to talk more about looking to leaks when we talk about looking at the different plumbing and places where it could be leaking. But right here is where we spot our first clue in scan data. We might have a possible leak. We can't talk about a duty cycle without talking the other issues for the duty cycle. For one, we've got to have the right electrical signals. We've got to have B+, and we have ground, ground supplied by the PCM on pin 2 here. So you must have this. If you have any doubts, go check for fault codes. If you still have doubt about operation, we need to check on the reaction to the control pressure sensor. The pressure sensor says we are reading a value. It's going to give us a duty cycle to match that value. If that value is wrong, it's going to goof us up. To do that, we unplug the ICP, the pressure sensor, and we see if it gives a default value of 725. Now, one quick way to identify the default value of 725 PSI is if the system supplies that, the engine will start. It may not accelerate, but it will start. Now, if you want to verify it, you can come here and hook up your high pressure to the test point we showed you on the pump and see if we've got our 725. As a quick reference for the pressure sensor, a quick check is you look at the ICP voltage on the scan tool. It should be between 0.12 and 0.3 with engine off. If it isn't, we need to diagnose the pressure sensor before we go any further because a wrong pressure sensor will throw off all of our readings for duty cycle. So three things it takes to make the duty cycle right. We're going to have the right amount of pressure delivered to the injectors as measured by the pressure sensor and as controlled by the pressure regulator and we need to have electrical power to the electrical regulator to make it work. While it may seem simplistic to be insisting we check the low pressure oil system, but in order for the high pressure system to perform normally, the low pressure oil system must work normally. So you crank the engine and see if the oil gauge on the dash comes up to 6 PSI. That means it goes from zero to normal. Remove the engine oil filter and crank the engine again to see if oil is being pumped up. Now this can be a bit messy on an E-Van, you'll have to use a drip pan. For the injection control pressure sensor to get its minimum and for the regulator to work, we must achieve at least 437 PSI and ideally 500 PSI. Now the low pressure oil pump problems can starve the high pressure pump for oil. The minimum engine low pressure oil specifications are 12 PSI minimum at 700 RPM, 2400 PSI minimum at 12, and 45 PSI minimum at 1800 with the engine at normal operating temperature.